It's 1983 and aliens are coming down to Earth to steer, preserve, and brainwash human civilization for their own cosmic purposes. Players will be playing a different alien faction trying to take over and collect different types of humans and cows in order to trade them in for societal power. This is Silos. Silos is actually a reimagining of an older game called Municipium by Reiner Knizia. So in turn, this is a game designed by Reiner Knizia, and the new artwork is done by Quanshai Mora. This is a very gorgeous production that we have here to show off today. So thank you to Bitewing Games for sending over this and sponsoring it in order to show you guys what this game is all about. But before we really dive any further in, I do want to make a note that this is a prototype copy, so any of the things that you see could be subject to change. Now, the easiest way to describe this game is basically to show you how to play it because it really isn't that complex. But I will say this is an area majority or area control board game where you're just going to be moving pieces around. And then at the end of your turn, you're going to be drawing an event card or playing one from in front of you. And that is actually as simple as it gets. But the cascading effects of you moving your pieces and you drawing an event card and enacting what its ability is or playing one of your own is really what will create the variety and interest in this game's design. Now remember, in order to actually win the game, you are trying to collect one of each of these different types of humans. They come in four different colors, purple, white, tan, and green. And once you collect one of each of these, you will immediately return them to the supply for a societal power emblem. And the first player to five of those is going to win the game. The first thing that players are going to do at the beginning of the game is actually place all of their player pieces or their aliens. They're going to be placing all seven of those at different locations at the board of their choosing. They're going to be placing them one by one. Each player is actually going to be starting with this adorable little cowboy hat character. So you actually get to place these cowboy hats on one of your starting aliens. And that's actually considered a leader. And they are going to count for a point and a half of influence and without the cowboy hat these aliens are just going to count for one influence that's important so just keep that in mind there's no limit to how many of these that you actually place at a certain location um, and also players are just going to keep going and going until they cannot place any more once everybody has seven on the board then the game will start influence in this game is decided by whoever has the most pieces inside of a location or really the most influence power so for example if i have three of my yellow aliens at a location and another player has two blue and then another player has you know one red um, I would then have influence over that location as the yellow player key note that your aliens can actually get a graduation cap at some point in the game and graduation cap aliens or they are called distinguished in this game they actually count for two whole points of influence On your turn, it is actually super simple what you're going to do. You're either going to move one of your pieces two times or two of your pieces one time. And you're just going to be moving from one location, following the path to an adjacent one in order to hopefully change the influence of that location. Then at the end of your turn, you're either going to be drawing a card from the event deck or you are going to be playing one of your special player powers in front of you. Now these special player powers are super powerful, um, but they are one use and the event deck will have things that basically allow everyone to have a chance at collecting humans, depending on if you are influencing certain locations around the board. So let's go ahead and take a look at what each of the events do. The most common event that will come up is going to be the UFO advance event. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be moving this UFO from one location to the next in numbered order. And you're going to be basically checking who has the most influence at that location. The player who has the most influence is going to take the cow, which is a wild for the set of four that you're trying to collect. And the player with the second most influence is going to be taking whatever human was randomly drawn and dispersed at that location. So it's kind of important to have influence over locations that you know are going to be visited by that UFO soon. 
The second most common card that you will draw from the event deck is called Marked Specimen. It essentially allows players to draw one human from the bag and then place it at any location they want. Now, before we go any further, let's talk about a couple of things that are important with this section of the game. Each location is going to have what is called a focus group. This is going to have three slots on it. And each location is also going to be attributed to a different color. So there's going to be green locations, purple locations, a white location, and tan locations. And these characters, these human types, can only go to those locations. So once you pull from a bag, if I draw a purple human, I have to put it at a purple location on the board. Now the fun thing is that politicians are the white meeples and these ones can actually be placed at any of the locations and also um, at the town hall. They're the only type that can be at the town hall. So I think that's kind of interesting as well. But something that is very important is called a mind control event. This is something that can happen when that focus group fills up, when all three of those spots are filled. And the moment that this happens, which could happen once you know a marked specimen card is played, you're going to look at who has the most influence at that location, and they're gonna to get to choose two humans in that focus group at that location. You're also gonna check who has the second most influence at that location, because they're going to get the other human there. And so that is kind of most of the ways that you're gonna be collecting these humans, is once it fills up, you're checking influence immediately, and then players are gonna be divvying out these humans, trying to get those different sets. Next up, we've got the one power card. This allows every player to do one location action at a location that they have the most influence at. So on top of all the things that we've talked about so far, every single location has its own unique location ability. So having control or the most influence over a location is important for when this pops up as well. I'm gonna be talking about what each location, what its special power is in just a moment, but really quickly, let's talk about the last event card that you could draw from the deck. That is going to be the all powers card. There is only one of these in this event deck, and it's very crazy. It essentially says that the power events of all locations are exerted. So that means that we're gonna check every location and we're gonna be looking at who has the most influence and whoever does is going to be activating that location's special power. So there's a lot of crazy abilities that are going to be popping off when this card is drawn in the round. Now that we have looked at the four different types of event cards that you could draw at the end of your turn, the next thing we are going to do is check out the location actions. Really quickly, the game actually comes with tiles that can be placed at different locations at the setup of the game that players can determine or you could randomly draw. And this actually gives some more variety on what these locations actually do. But today I'm just gonna be talking about the powers of each location in the standard game, the ones that are already on the board when you just pull out the game and start playing. When the town hall's power is activated, you are going to be rearranging hierarchy order based on who has the most influence at the town hall. So this is actually how you're you're going to be able to change that hierarchy order, which is super fun. The Sheriff's Office allows you to move one or more alien figures of one color from any one location to the Sheriff's Office. And the fun thing about this is that it can actually be another player's pieces or your own. The university is how you get educated as these aliens. So you are gonna be able to move all of your alien figures from the university over to the town hall to distinguish one of your alien figures there. So that means you get to place that cool little graduation cap on one of your pieces and you will have a piece that has more influence throughout the rest of your gameplay. The shopping mall allows you to reveal new humans and place them in any corresponding focus group, but you must stop when a mind control event occurs, essentially when you fill a focus group. So super powerful location because you can try and aim and figure out how to make sure that you're the one benefiting by collecting humans. But since you're pulling them randomly from the bag, it's not always going to be good for you because sometimes you might have to fill a focus group that you don't want to. The news station says that you can exchange any three of your humans and or cows for any one societal power emblem or draw one human from the bag. Essentially, this makes it to where you can actually get a societal power emblem for only three pieces instead of the usual four different ones, which is really, really good. The church allows you to either take one human from another player 
or you can take one human from any focus group on the board. And lastly, we've got the bus station, which allows you to reposition any of your alien figures on the board, which is the best movement ability. It allows you to really get your pieces where you want them exactly and set up for some awesome plays. But as you can see, each of these different locations powers are actually really, really good. So that gives some context of when we draw a one power card at the end of our turn and we're looking at um, each player being able to use one of those powers if they are the influencer of that location. You've really got to be careful on what happens around the board and who has influence over which location. This is really the heart of the game here. It is getting extremely hot in here. I'm not I'm not sure why. Like I was totally fine before I started the video, but now I'm feeling like I'm potentially not doing okay. So you now have information on every ability, all the event cards, all of the location powers. And the only thing that I haven't taught you about yet are these three cards that every player starts the game with. Now these three cards have really cool, powerful abilities, but they are one use. So let's look at these right now. The first one is going to be human confluence. This says that you can reveal four humans from the bag and then place them one at a time on any corresponding focus group. So it's a way to get some humans out on the board and possibly pop off some mind control events and get some humans. The other one is your powers. This allows you to exert the power events in the locations where you have the most influence. So a really good card to play if you have influence over a lot of different locations because you can just use all of those powers of those locations. And then the last one is the UFO sighting. It allows you to advance the UFO or reposition any of your alien figures. So these, you use them, you're done with them, and this can be done instead of drawing from the event deck. So you're gonna be gaining humans from either drawing cards and being forced to by using the events, you're gonna be gaining humans by using the power events of certain locations, and you are also going to be able to gain humans and cows from whenever that UFO is moving around the board. And all of those in order to trade in four different types of humans or using a cow as wild in order to get those societal power emblems. And like I said, first of five is going to win the game. One of the things that I love the most about this event deck is that there are only 12 cards inside of it. And that means that you can actually count cards fairly easily. And even better, the game actually has around the board different spaces for where you place these cards once they are drawn in order to show you how many are left in the deck. And this actually creates so much tension because at some points in the game, you may not want a UFO advance to happen, but you've already drawn everything else and there's only one more UFO advance in the deck. And that's really easy to see how many more of each card. Some of the things that make this game so interesting are the simple decisions. You're moving your pieces, you're drawing a card and activating what it does, all in an attempt to collect these different sets of pieces. And oftentimes what I like is that uh, whenever you're using these abilities, they're going to be benefiting somebody else slightly. And there are a lot of opportunities for negotiation of, okay, let's mind control this location because you need this type of human and I need this type of human. So why don't we just work together and do that? And I love that there's a lot of that throughout the gameplay. It feels very fresh and interesting. On top of that, the game looks gorgeous. It is very, very well produced. This is definitely a game where you can teach anybody and once you teach them it starts clicking really really quickly but a game with advanced players is honestly even more interesting especially with all of the extras that come in the box one thing i did not tell you is that there are actually two different modules that you can add to the game there's the crop circles module which adds one of your influence but it kind of stays at a location permanently and then there's also the permanent skill tiles module which allows you to basically get these special abilities that you have added access to when you have influenced a location and those will be passing around throughout the game giving you some special powers that feel very unique and very fun oh i think i've got a migraine something is literally stabbing into my brain right now i swear 
So that is it for Silos. I really hope that this actually gave you an idea of what this game has to offer and if it's something that you would want to check out and play. I know that I've been enjoying it and I am very, very excited for really anything that Bitewing puts out because I feel like they have a really, really good grasp on games that are easy to play and get into, but very, very interesting and deep. I mean, this is honestly why Reiner Knizia is such a great designer. They make simple games, but they are so, so deep and rich the more you dive into them. But hey, that is it for the video. What did you guys think of Silos? Is this something that you're going to be picking up and checking out? Is the theme doing it for you? Are the components doing it for you? Is the gameplay and mechanics doing it for you? Definitely drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think and if you are interested i've got a link down below to the campaign that you can check it out on but guys that is it for the video let's oh oh ah <sighs>